attacking Spooky Tumble! Whoa! Whoa! Spooky October Halloween! Whoa, Barry! Whoa! Okay, so I think this is the most appropriate time to discuss what would happen if Blackbeard, that's right, Marshall D. Teach, not to be confused with Barry D. Barry D. Live, I found that in a store and I had to buy it, alright? They messed up his last name though, but it was the closest I could possibly get, right? Okay, but anyway, Marshall D. Teach, Blackbeard, if he became king of the pirates, if he demolished the world government and Marie Joie, and he ruled the entire world, you know, the Grand Line and the Four Blues, I guess he can rule the Calm Belt too, I mean, I guess he could control the, the Sea Kings there, I, I said, well, you know, if he gets his hands on the ancient weapons, and, you know, Shirahoshi and Poseidon, I guess he could necessarily do that, so, we're gonna talk about that today and see where this goes, um, I was gonna put the lights back up, but screw it. Let's let's keep it like this. It's it's spookier this way. Okay. So um, you know, big discussion I was going to have with this was the difference between Kaido and Blackbeard. I mentioned this in Kaido's video. How Kaido wants to create a pirate paradise in Wano right now. Well, basically he already did. You know, because Orochi's kind of right now. So Kaido is the acting ruler of the entire country, and his first decree was, you know, I'm turning Wano into a lawless pirate paradise. War, 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 war. We actually don't know what's going on on the mainland right now in Wano, because we're right now in the Battle of Onigashima. Maybe Oda at some point will cut back over to the mainland to see what's going on. Because I imagine, like, you know, you know, telecommunications, like the Denden Mushi and stuff, they're kind of, like, different in Wano, but they still exist. So, I'm thinking, like, maybe somebody in over in the mainland would have gotten a smail call or something. Like, this just in, Shogun Orochi was decapitated, and Wano is now under the rule of pirates. So... You know, party it up tonight while you can, kids, because it's going to be very, very different come tomorrow morning. Oh, and also, by the way, just like quick caveat to that, Oda is sick. Um, we found this out yesterday that the chapter is going to be delayed. Uh, so the next chapter of One Piece 992 should be out on October 17th uh, because of Oda's health. So I wish him a speedy recovery there. We may or may not get chapter 1000 this year, but I think Oda's health matters more than that. So uh, hope him all the best and that uh, he can get back to it when he's uh, feeling uh, more able. Okay, so uh, yeah, that, that's the situation with Wano right now, but then what about Blackbeard? Because Blackbeard, of course, rules over the Beehive, the Hachinosu, the same island that Rocks ruled over back in the day, and that's also referred to as a pirate paradise, where pirates can just gather together without fear of being found out by the Marines or the world government, and they can just party it up and they can do whatever. Um, there still is a pirate code, right? And Blackbeard is very clearly like the boss of the island right now, along with everybody else and his crew that are kind of like ruling over it right now. You know, one thing I'm kind of curious about I guess I should probably do a geography as everything on the Hachinosu at some point but I'm curious it's just like how come that is the pirate paradise how come like the marines never show up there or the world government doesn't have any power there it might be hidden away some part of the world um it actually might tie back into the connection between rocks and blackbeard maybe rocks you know left behind a map or something and the, you know this is how you get to the pirate paradise where I built up my entire crew back in the day maybe blackbeard found it maybe blackbeard is rocks's son or carried on his will or something like that. Um, going along with the themes of One Piece, I would rather it be Blackbeard kind of being like an opposite of Luffy in that regard, where Luffy carries on Shanks' will, Shanks gave him the straw hat, and Luffy carries on that way. Meanwhile, you have Blackbeard that is not like blood-related to Rox, but maybe Rox gave something to Blackbeard. Like maybe Rox gave him like the map to the, the beehive or something, or a map to a great treasure or something to get kind of his pirate exploits, or maybe he's the one that told Blackbeard about the Yami Yami no Mi. Like, we find out that he scoured the Devil Fruit Encyclopedia, but maybe, like, maybe the whole reason this kind of started was maybe Rox, you know, left behind the Devil Fruit Encyclopedia, and he, like, circled the Yami Yami no Mi or something, and just, like, you know, this is the one you want to have, kid. And, and it might not have anything to do with that, you know, Blackbeard might just, like, not even have any connection to Rox in that way. He's just carrying on his will, whether he even knows it, right? It might be something like that, but there's a lot of parallels going on here, right? And speaking of Rox, I mean, a lot of people also talk about, like, Rox 
rocks coming back, like in a literal way, like resurrecting rocks. Like, hey, uh, you know, Moria is at the Hachinosu right now. Might either, uh, like, Blackbeard might kill Moria, take his devil fruit, the Kage Kage, or he might just use Moria's power, you know, like force him to work for him. Um, and if that's the case, we have zombie power. And if that's the case, we might br bring back rocks or bring back Rox's body at least or something like that or Whitebeard's body. Or there might be some other way that, you know, Rox didn't really maybe die. Maybe he's like in stasis or something and Blackbeard's going to try to bring him back or something. I mean, that would be cool. I mean, it would just be cool to see Rox in full view and like what his what he actually looked like and what his whole deal was and everything. Rox's goal at the end of the day was to become king of the world. Um, and if Blackbeard really does embody that will, um, I mean, that's like one step beyond King of the Pirates. You know, that's like, like I said, that's not just becoming like, oh, I found the One Piece. No, that's literally like demolishing the world government and taking your, your rightful place at like the top of the red line and everything like that. But, you know, I just don't see Blackbeard being okay with that. Like, like the same thing with Luffy, not wanting to just sit on a throne. Like, okay, I became king. I'm just going to sit on a throne. I don't see Blackbeard happy with that. So, like... The, the thing that Rox was trying to do, demolish the world government, which is in order to become king of the world, I guess you'd have to demolish the world government first. I mean, that kind of goes hand in hand. That part, Blackbeard might follow in his footsteps. But beyond that, uh, it's going to be a little bit different for Blackbeard, I think. Just like how Luffy is probably not going to follow exactly in Roger's footsteps. He's going to add his own little flavor to it. So I think the big difference here between Kaido and Blackbeard and how they would rule the entire ocean is that if Kaido manages to find Laugh Tale and the One Piece and rules over the world, I feel like that would be where he would kind of like that. That's his kind of like goal, right? So it's like, I'm, I'm Dragon King of the entire world. World, world, world. Everybody's living in a pirate paradise and that's, that's it. I'm just going to rule over that for the rest of my days. Um, kind of the same thing with Big Mom ruling over the world, making the entire world like her one big tot land. Um, you know, she has her tot land, she's the queen and she rules over everything. Let me ask you a question. Because there are so many parallels between Blackbeard and Luffy, you can kind of like connect their dreams back. And remember back when Blackbeard at Jaya, he was, you know, the age of dreams will never die. You know, that's the great thing about Blackbeard's character is that, you know, the first time Blackbeard met Luffy, you know, it wasn't all of like, you know, Luffy, you stand for everything I stand against. Therefore, I'm going to fight you. You know, they definitely didn't get along during their first meeting. You know, they almost got into a brawl just over the the, the cherry pie at the uh, the of the pub in Jaya, which by the way, if Blackbeard became king of the pirates, I mean, free cherry pies for everybody. I'm personally more of a pumpkin pecan pie guy myself, but if cherry is available, I will of course eat it. So, I mean, I guess I'm okay with that front. Um, so they almost got into a fight, so they're definitely not on like similar terms, but you know, as Luffy was walking away after the bar fight with Bellamy, what did Blackbeard do? Blackbeard's there and he's just like, hey kid, Sky Island, yeah, I'm sure it exists. The age of dreams will never die. When Luffy finally becomes King of the Pirates, which I am 99.99% sure is going to happen by the end of this story, when Luffy becomes the proper Pirate King, do you think that's going to be the end of Luffy's journey? Do you think Luffy's just going to, like, find Laugh Tale, find the One Piece? Like, oh, Monkey D. Luffy, Pirate King! And Luffy's just going to be like, damn straight, I'm the Pirate King, and put on the metaphorical crown, or maybe it'll be a physical crown, who knows, I don't know. And he puts on the crown, and he's just like, yep, and now I rule. I'm sure the world government will collapse at that point, um, whether it be because of Luffy directly interfering or because of the Revolutionary Army interfering. Um, you know, Luffy and the Straw Hats might have a role to play in that direct conflict there with taking out the world government and everything. Um, I'm always kind of curious on how that's going to go because, you know, Marie Joie is all the way back there on the red line and the Straw Hats are heading, you know, away from it. So I want Luffy to have like an encounter with like the Gorosei or Eam, you know, be a part of taking down the world government. But it's like, How's he going to get back unless they, you know, find some magic flying machine and they get all the way back from Rizra. That could always happen, too. Um, I'm always curious on how it's going to go down. But my point here is, of course, you know, after Luffy becomes King of the Pirates, that is not the end of Luffy's journey. That is just the end of this one particular adventure. There will be so much more in the world beyond that. And I think Blackbeard will have that exact same, you know, perspective. You know, the age of pirate dreams will never end. So even after he finds Laugh Tale, becomes the King of the Pirates, maybe discovers the ancient weapons, gets rid of the world government and basically turns the entire world into a pirate paradise just like Blackbeard, I mean, just like, like Kaido wants to do, he's not just going to rule over that. No, he's going to want something even more, even greater. Now, what could that thing be? 
I have no idea, but I'm sure there are plenty of other islands beyond just Laugh Tale. Like, I doubt that Laugh Tale is, like, the last island in the entire world that has a mystery or an adventure afoot. You know, there are probably plenty of other Mirage Islands out there, plenty of other lands that have yet to be explored. Um, in the case with Luffy and the Straw Hats, they would travel to those lands to just get high adventure and discover more interesting people and cultures and, like, learn more about the world. Blackbeard though would be a little bit more you know actual piratey with it like oh we're gonna travel legend has it there's a mirage island somewhere in the north of the north blue we're gonna travel there and we're going to rule over it you know we're gonna travel there and burn it down or something just because we can blackbeards would definitely be a lot more uh grisly with how it is handled right but it would still be the same basic idea it wouldn't be him ruling over this world it would be him you know just like throwing it into as much chaos as possible but him still going out with his his crew still traveling and still trying to find adventure now look i've talked about this at length i'm a big fan of this theory but i understand that when i actually sat down to you know think of things to talk about for this video and i threw this idea out there i kind of had to stop and like push the you know the little like little notes i put away and i'm just like this is ridiculous. This sounds absolutely absurd. For some reason, it, it sounds more absurd when I use Blackbeard than Luffy, even though the whole concept of this is kind of absurd. But I'm just gonna throw it out there, because why not, right? Alright, so, the moon. The moon is a thing. Can we talk about the moon? I know we've already talked about the moon a lot, but let's talk about the moon, okay? So, we got the moon. It's a place. It exists. Eneru's up there right now with an army of automata, okay? There, it's a place that has an ancient city called Bricka, which was named uh, the name of the same place that Eneru comes from. The Skypean race, the Shandorians, the Brickans, they all came from the moon, all right? The moon is going to be relevant one way or the other. Like, it has to be relevant one way or the other. All, all species, the humans might have come from the moon way, way, way back in the day, long before the Void Century, right? Long before all of that. Space pirates are also a thing that exists. They exist in the One Piece world. This was established. So I'm thinking like, all right, like what if Luffy, you know, Luffy becomes king of the pirates and he finds the One Piece and they explore the entire world. You know, what else is for them after that? Well, the final frontier, space! Picturing Frankie like tricking out the Sunny, like adding giant rocket thrusters to it. Like, ah, Luffy, super, let's get on board. <laughs> and they just blast off into space. Eneru flew to the moon on the Ark Maxim, all right? Like, the moon is different in One Piece where it has, like, a breathable atmosphere. It's very, very different, okay? So, I'm just saying, like, if Luffy might end up... I was throwing out that idea, like, they, let's go to space. Why not? I could see Blackbeard doing it too, and that's the part that makes it absurd. Like, it really does. Like, oh, let's picture this, okay? Let's say a few years pass. Like, it's like 10, 20 years of Blackbeard being king of the pirates. And he's, like, explored the entire world at this point. I mean, he has a fleet that is so ridiculously massive that he could go anywhere in the world. He's found every bit of treasure. Like, literally, Blackbeard is sitting on a throne just made of gold doubloons and, and whatnot. And, um, you know, he's, like, maybe in his 60s at this point, because he's, like, 40 right now. And all of his, all of his enemies are dead. Like, he has a battle, like, his crew fights against Shanks. That would be really cool to see. Like, he becomes king, and then Shanks is like, fine, nobody else will help, so I guess it's just gonna be an, an all-out battle between me and him. Maybe the Straw Hats would get involved in that battle, and then Blackbeard would just, like, slaughter them all, right? Um, you know, so he has, like, Shanks' skull, like, on his throne next to Luffy's skull. And he's, like, talking, he's like... Ah, Shanks, you were a worthy opponent back in the day, but now I rule over the entire- I've explored every island there is! Are there any dreams left for a pirate, Shanks? Are there? You know, he's like freaking Hamlet, you know, whatever. Okay, then he hears a story about the moon. Maybe Blackbeard explores the Sky Islands a bit, because that's also something that... I don't think Blackbeard's ever been to a Sky Island. I mean, he might have been at this point. Who knows? We know Bellamy went to one. 
Maybe he goes to the Sky Islands and he starts conquering the Sky Islands and he starts learning about this fairy verth, this endless verth. I'm like, oh yeah, there's a legend that there's a, a, a place of Holy Land way even further up than the White White Sea. And uh, that's what Eneru was trying to find back then. You know, he was always trying to look for this place, Fairy Verth. And then Blackbeard and his crew figure out that they're talking about the freaking moon. And they're like, all right, mate, all right, matey, say ha 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 ha. We head to the moon. And if Eneru is still up there, like if Eneru just, like I'm thinking Eneru is amassing an army to take over the Blue Sea. But Eneru's, his ultimate goal, remember, was just to reach Fairy Verth. So maybe he's like, yep, I'm perfectly content just living on Fairy Verth. It looks kind of boring because it's just like a vast wasteland, but there is a city there and he's got an army. I would assume he's going to head back down, but maybe he's just going to stay there for 10, 20 years. That's like he's going to spend the rest of his life there. And Eru is just chilling up there on the moon. And then you have a moment where Blackbeard, you know, he uses like the combined technology. He's not a really smart guy in terms of this, but, you know, he has all these scientists that are probably working for him that used to work for the world government. Um, and, you know, and they, he, he figures out a way to make a flying machine at this point. If he figured out a way to get to the White Sea and the White White Sea to explore that, I'm sure he finds a way. Like there's like only one step beyond that to make a flying machine to get to the freaking moon, right? If he's literally the commander of the entire world, maybe one of the ancient weapons can fly, like Aranos or something. So anyway, he gets to the moon, right? He gets to the moon and his crew start like, like scouring the moon and they run into freaking Eneru and his army of machines. And those machines look kind of dorky. They're like really short, you know, they're just kind of like these short little robots or whatever. But, and they have like little, little uh, like broom mustaches, mustaches. But who knows? Maybe those things can, like, combine into a giant, like, Megazord or some shit. You never know, right? And so, yes, I'm gonna just throw this idea out there. This story basically ends with Blackbeard becoming king of the pirates, amassing every strong devil fruit he can pretty much imagine. He kills Luffy, takes his devil fruit, um, kills Chopper, takes the human human fruit, of course. Uh, you know, all the admirals fall to Blackbeard at this point. You know, Kizaru, Fujitora, Green Bull, he gets all of their fruits and either keeps them for himself or if you want to go with that, like, three soul theory or he distributes them to his crew. He amasses even stronger members of his crew. Maybe there's former Marines or former revolutionaries or other pirates that join Blackbeard out of fear of dying. You know, like the Marines fight for justice, but when Blackbeard rules the world, he could pretty much just be like, ah, you either fight for me, I've already won, or you die. Some Marines like Garp and Av, Sen Sengoku and Akainu, I'm sure they would fight to their last breath. But um, there's other Marines that might join up with him. Don't know what's up with Aokiji yet. Really not sure what's up with him. If he's really truly a member of Blackbeard. I think he's just a member of Sword. So he would probably die fighting at that point too. And uh, Kizaru, it just depends on the kind of day. Um, but no, Kizaru is still a Marine through and through. So I think Kizaru would still fight to the death in that front there. And they would probably get all wiped out. Freaking Blackbeard gets his hands on the Pika Pika no Mi. Gives that to like, hey Vasco shot, you want to shoot lasers? Yeah, here you go. Topa, topa, topa. That's cool, boss. Glug, glug. Look, look. Bam! Oh man, I did a Kamehameha! That's cool! You know, so he amasses this much power, and then the final, final dream in the world that is yet to be discovered, they go to the damn moon, and then in this little parallel universe I've crafted, we have Blackbeard and his army face off against Eneru and his army in an all-balls-out brawl on the freaking moon. I think that's cool. I think that works, you know? And then Blackbeard might win. He might use the Yami Yami no Mi to suck the entire moon into his, like, into a black void, you know? And that's what he does, or some kills Eneru in the process, or Eneru might win. Not really sure. I guess it depends on the Automata army on how that would go. Because if, if Blackbeard rocked up to the moon with, like, an entire army of, like, you know, the, the pirates at that point, you know, like, all powered up and everything, there's no way Eneru would win. But, uh, I guess that depends, right, on the army. Um, so yeah, like, I, I always, like, I'm, I know that sounds really ridiculous. I get it. I know. I know that sounds ridiculous, even for me. But I'm like, you know, Blackbeard is a dreamer, much like Luffy. He's always gonna look for the next adventure, the next big thing to do. Blackbeard will never be satiated just sitting on a throne, drinking booze all day with no greater prospect. I mean, I know that's basically kind of what he's doing right now, but Blackbeard has his hands in many sinister soups right now, right? He's keeping an eye on Wano. He's, um, he might 
might be attacking Totland now that Big Mom's not there. That's a big theory. He might be doing that. There's definitely a goal for Blackbeard. We just don't know what it is. We don't know what his ultimate goal is. But I think it's like the same thing with Luffy. Like, we don't know. Like, beyond, like, yeah, Luffy wants to become King of the Pirates. Kaizuko Oni, Oro, and Nara. But that's not his final, final, final goal. Luffy's not going to become king and just be like, okay, I became king. Well, that was my goal. All right, I'm good. I'm set. No, there's, there's way more to it than that. And there's more to that with, than with Blackbeard, okay? It's deliberately ambiguous where Blackbeard, I'm sure, wants to find Laugh Tale, but there's more. There's That's just the beginning. There's way more to it than that. And there's really, there's no set goal beyond that. And I think that's what makes it um, interesting for both Luffy and Blackbeard's characters, right? So that's where I went to the moon. I'm just like, all right, well, if he discovers the Void Century and everything about that, what's the next big mystery? And I'm like, well, I'm sure there's a lot of other great mysteries in the world, but the moon is definitely included in one of those. And then after the moon, I don't know! Blackbeard makes an evil space pirate fleet and travels off into the stars. End of story. <laughs> I don't know, man. So yeah, that uh, Blackbeard becomes a uh, space pirate. Bet you didn't see this theory going there, but it went there. Um, this is going to be a really fun month. I don't know if we're going to do Horoween this year. Um, you know, if, if we do, it'll probably be like a shorter version of Horoween. I don't know if I'm ever going to get to do like a 13-episode Horoween thing again. Um... But we'll see where this goes. It's my favorite month of the year. It's October. It's autumn. It's spooky and creepy. And everything smells like pumpkins and and pumpkin spice, whichever variant. So uh, I'm really excited to do this. Hope you guys enjoy. This will be teching. Scything out. Ch -ch -ch.